First up, Jeff. Herm, it, it, there's a lot on uh, a quarterback's shoulders in a normal year anyway. Um, how much additional responsibility and pressure is there on someone like Jaden in, in the middle of COVID and what, with what your team has gone through? Well, you know, he, he's part of it. You know, when you think about the quarterback, he, he is, he's in the huddle with the players. Um, right, wrong, or indifferent, when, when things aren't, aren't functioning well on the field, he's got to play that leadership role. Uh, all those things come into play, and I think Jaden's well aware of that. We've lost two tough games uh, thus far this, this season. Um, bringing in a new offense, obviously, uh, Conversation I had with Jaden earlier is that you know we don't have Brandon Ayuk here. Brandon Ayuk is in the NFL; he's first-round pick. The veteran receiver is Frank. We lost him early in the SC game. He was able to play this week, so you got a host of young players with a new offense, and, and, and that's just part of it. And that's just how you process all that and how you lead them through this is, is very important. So he understands that. Jackson. Hey, Coach, uh, just looking ahead to this week, um, you know, U of A has lost 11 straight games. Do you just expect, you know, an extra hungry team given that they've lost so many games and that this is a rivalry game? Well, when you turn the tape on, uh, very competitive. They lost to SC at home by four. They lose to Colorado. And, and that was one of those games uh, you know, this week that they played Colorado. And they, they, were, they were one score down in the third quarter and threw a costly interception in the end zone and then had the ball right back down there again. And on the fourth down, Colorado made a play uh, and didn't allow them to score. So they, they played very well at home against two teams that obviously are undefeated. So we anticipate that along with it being a rivalry game. Um, they have not won a game. We have not won a game uh, this season. And so all bets are off. And I think we know that we have, we have a bunch of young guys the first year going to this. We're trying to give them little pieces of what this game really means um, to our fan base, uh, where it stands in college football, one of, the, one of the longest rivalries in college football. So all those things matter. Uh, and, we, you know, like anybody else, when you haven't won a game, you want to win a game. I mean, you just you, you don't want to keep going through this, the drudgery of, of, of almost winning. They want to win one and we want to win one. Drive it. Sure. I sorry, Herm, what did you think of the offensive execution of your game plan against UCLA, especially in light of the several weeks you had off and then falling in a hole early in the game? Well, I, I thought we were slow early. Um, I thought our whole team was kind of slow trying to figure out the pace of the game. Um, first quarter was a, was an even quarter, 0-0. Zero, zero. Their second quarter all season, UCLA has been their big scoring quarter. And... Uh, they, they got a lead on us. Uh, quarterback made some plays with his feet. The runner made uh, a couple of nice runs for them. Offensively, we struggled a little bit, just connecting and, and you know trying to hit some passes. Uh, that that wasn't really smooth. And I thought the second half, we kind of got a flow going, and then it became a game of really handling their pressure. They brought a lot of pressure. They brought five, six man pressure for most of the day, and it was a matter of our receivers, um, you know, getting open versus man to man coverage. That's going to kind of be our deal right now. I think people are going to bring pressure. They're going to see if we can beat uh, their cover guys. Uh, that's kind of what the game became, became one of those type of games. Oh. Herm, when you look at uh, the two games you played this year and, and the defense giving up uh, a, a score in, or the USC game, a uh, couple scores so late in the game, I know you win and lose as a team. But is there something to be said about uh, lack of offensive support, if you will, in, in the second half that maybe just kind of puts the defense at a, at a breaking point? Well, I don't know that so much. I just think we, all, we had opportunities in both those games that you mentioned. Uh, we had an opportunity to make some stops against SC on fourth down. And it did not, that did not happen. And then uh, the SC game, we also had the opportunity offensively to go down at the end. We, deal, we still possessed the ball at the end. We had a chance to get in the field goal range and maybe kick a field goal and win, right? So you know, when you look at that game, you look at this game, um, the defense had to lead at the end. Although it was four minutes, we had to lead by a point. 
there was four minutes left on the clock and uh, we couldn't find a way to get off the field. We needed to get off the field. And uh, with that being said, the offense had the ball at the end to go and we had two timeouts in our pocket to go down the field and, and maybe score and, and get it tied up. Um, that didn't, that, that didn't, that didn't happen for us. And so, you know, th that's what we are right now as a football team, not, not be able to, to finish things either, on either side of the football. Michelle. Hey coach, you touched on it a little bit earlier, but I was wondering your take on your players comfort level with this offense right now. After two games, um, I think it's it's still work in progress, and that's what it's been. And I think for Zach, too, getting familiar with the players, um, how he wants to call the game, he's only had two live games. And, and so that's – it's we're still working at it. There's no doubt about that. And, and we when you think about it, we had one game, and then we had a delay for quite some time before we played again. So I, I think it's, it's, it's just – it's familiarity, you know, we have new running backs. We have a host of new receivers. We're in a new offense. Uh, we use the tight end packages a little bit more than we've done here in the past. With two tight ends at times. Uh, so all that all that stuff has to get has to get worked out. And the only way you work it out is you have to play games. And we've been fortunate to play two. So hopefully we can finish off with some more games before the season ends. Michael. Yeah, coach. When you looked at the tape of UCLA too, also, what was your thought of uh, the secondary. I mean, obviously, like you said, I know it's two games, but from USC, I mean, making plays, being physical, but then to this game, what was your thought of the secondary play? Of you, of from UC, of yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. No, for yours, for yours. Um, I thought for the most part, uh, secondary was physical, as far as the, the run game, you know, because they were, they were going to run the ball, and um, we did a pretty good job. We missed a, we missed a tackle or two. Pass coverage wise, uh, I thought at times we, we played fairly well, you know, when the quarterback left the pocket. And so I, I think as a unit, um, obviously, you know, we got we got some players that, 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 that had to play a little bit more than we anticipated due to our situation in, in, in the back end. But that's OK. They got some snaps that, that I think will help them down the road uh, in, in developing as a good football player. Uh, uh, Hi, Herm. Uh, you, you were asked about this after Saturday's game, but the ineligible man downfield penalties, when, when you saw those again on uh, film, how tricky is that that role in the first place? And what, what were the lessons or learned from that uh, from, the, from those plays? Well, a couple of them were tight, uh, but for some of them, um, they were obvious. And uh, I, I think sometimes we don't if we don't get the call correctly, a couple of them, when I, I think, you know, the call they didn't hear the whole call and they thought it was another play and it was not. And so, you know, that, that hurt us. There's no doubt that that hurt us a couple of plays, big plays, one, one for a touchdown that you don't get back. Andre's first touchdown is a shame. You know, he, he runs a nice route. It's a nice play call. Everything's designed, right? You got a man downfield cancels that out. So hopefully we can learn from that and get better. Jacob. Herm, a, a couple months ago, you had talked about how Tyler Johnson was in a much better mental place than he was even a couple weeks before when you had said that. You know, relative to what he's been able to do and what he did on Saturday, where do you think he is in terms of his overall motivation towards the game? Because you had said that it was never really a physical thing for him. It was always how much he wanted it. Yeah, and I think he's improved uh, tremendously. I mean, he, he's, he is one of the bright spots on defense right now for us as far as rushing the quarterback and getting to the quarterback. He made a couple of plays in UCLA games, one-on-one -on -one tackles with that quarterback. Very difficult to do. You guys watch the game. He's, he's a handful of space. And, and Tyler did a great job of rushing the pocket and keeping the quarterback contained and um, he made some plays. So he's been a, he's been a, a bright spot defensively for the plays he's made. He's always been a guy to make a play or two, but he's he had a really pretty consistent game. I felt one of his most consistent games, in my opinion, since he's been. Yeah. What, what do you think you've learned uh, from about this rivalry over the last two years? And you were talking about all the young players. How do you get that across to them? I think every day we talk about it a little bit. And there's, there's certain ways you show them certain things. 
what has transpired over the years. And, and, and all these young guys know they've had a high school rivalry, but now this is a college one. This is a big one. This one, this one has been going on for a long, long time, right? And, and I just think the fan bases uh, really get excited about this game. It's a shame that the fans can't come in the stands because I can remember the first time playing in it down there. It, it was quite a... It was quite an atmosphere. And then last year they came here, atmosphere had changed a whole lot. And I think both fan bases uh, really are motivated by this game. You have bragging rights for a whole year when you win a game like this. So it's kind of important. Hunter, you mentioned obviously two games in a row now that you say that you guys feel like you didn't necessarily finish. Yes. How do you improve finishing games is it something that you is it late game scenarios in practice is it just motivation is it i'm curious as to what your philosophy is with trying to get your players to be able to finish games understanding the situation and, and not letting your guard down i think sometimes you know games go when they have it flow they flow games go up and they go down and, and i think there comes a point in the game especially in the fourth quarter when you're playing a tight game that um every snap becomes more magnified when the game is tight like that because of, of, of how is this thing going to go now? What team is going to gain momentum? And um, we have lost momentum. When we had some momentum, when we had the game like right in our hands and we lost the momentum, whether it was on offense or defense. And I think when we get into those situations, we have to understand that and close the game out. We have to learn how to close the game out. Yes. Oh, oh, sorry. Hey, Coach, obviously you made a uh, kicking change there um, the end of the first half. Do you have any updates on what the kicking situation will be going forward? Well, we have we have two kickers. Similar to my first year here, we, we had two kickers. Uh, and uh, we'll just play it by ear. You know, with, with practice will have a lot to do with it. Both of them have done a good job for the most part. Young young man went in there, Luckhurst went in there first kick and he kicked one. In practice, we had them both working at it again today and we'll determine when the game's being played. We feel comfortable at that point if we have to kick uh, kick a field goal. A few more questions. Michael. Coach, I know you talked about Tyler too, but how complimentary, I mean, obviously the improvement of, of I mean, the, not even improvement, the growth of uh, uh, Lole. I mean, on Lole. that defensive line, I mean, how important is that in your eyes, I mean, to Tyler's growth as well? No doubt, unsung hero inside. And, uh, you know, he's getting a lot of double teams at times as far as uh, in passing situations. But, but he all, he all, he's always in, in position to, to make, the comfortable un, uh, make, make the quarterback uncomfortable. Smart player, uh, real physical inside, and has a way of working his way to the quarterback. So, you know, he, he's been – been very consistent for us. There's no doubt about that. And I think when you get a couple guys inside, that's a concern for offenses. You know, all of a sudden the end gets a one-on-one -on -one and has the ability to, be, to beat the tackle. That helps you as, as, as a defense. Jacob. Herm, last week you spoke about how one of your foremost concerns for the game against UCLA was your team's conditioning and yes. how you come back from a three-week hiatus. How did they perform relative to your expectations from a conditioning standpoint? And kind of how do you build from what you saw over the weekend? We were a little fatigued in the first quarter on, on both sides of the ball. You could see it in the players. And then it was just a matter of, of getting into feeling the game speed again. You know, we, we, we had missed that. And, and that the anxiety of the game speed has the ability to get you fatigued. And I thought that happened. But for the most part, I thought the second half, we, we got our win. And we started to, to, to realize we're in a game and this is what it's going to look like. So, you know, I, I think we can move on from that now. But that, that's always scary when you play your first game, you know, and, and, and then you get a layoff as long as we had. You know, what is the condition? And you're playing a team that's been playing games and we hadn't had the opportunity to do that. First half, it affected us a little bit. Zach. Coach, I like to think I'm an optimist. Is there, uh, is there anything positive coming out of this game that you think we should address uh, in, in talking about today's press conference? Well, the rivalry and the history of it all. I mean, it, it, you guys, you know, this, is, this has been going on a long, long time. 
And I just think that uh, when you have rivalry games, that's what makes college football so special. They used to have rivalry games in the NFL, and they started adding teams and switching divisions and everything else. And they still have some. But, but this college thing is, 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 is interesting because it's, it's about the fan bases. It's about the people that, tend to, that have attended these universities, right, as, uh, as students. And they might not even be athletes, but they understand the rivalry games. And so historically, you know, that's what makes this thing so unique. And it really doesn't matter how many games you won or lost. You play a rivalry game, you understand the emotion of it all. And the sad part, I think, for everyone that has to play in the rivalry games, especially in the Pac-12 where fans can't come in and watch it, because that's half of it. You know, that, that, that's half of the excitement of it all, the pageantry of, of the rivalry games and, and the fan bases getting after each other. It, it's fun to watch. Craig? Hey, Coach, follow up on that. How awkward or different is this, having just played two games a month apart, and U of A's played four. I mean, it just has a different feel almost to me coming into the rivalry week. Does it to you at all? Well, it does in the sense um, that I think the sad part, and I, I keep getting back to it, is, is, is the passion and, and the energy that the fans bring into the stadium. You can imagine what it looks like in this rivalry game. And that's hard. You know, I think it's, it's hard on everybody because the players anticipate it. You know, you anticipate if you're going on the road, this is what it's going to be like. And if, if they're coming here, this is what, so, I mean, all those things, uh, now fans are hollering at the televisions or at the monitors. Uh, we can't hear them. And they have that other noise, that ambience noise that just keeps running. After a while, you don't hear it. After about five minutes of the game, you don't even hear it anymore. It's just kind of, eh, okay. Uh, so all that, I think, has a lot to do with it. We missed that. Last question, Jeff. Yeah. On mute, Jeff. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So you were successful throwing the double pass in the early part of the second half. And that, that was, that's always been a big part of Boise's offense. Do you, do you see as you go along more of those kind of, whether you want to call them trick plays or whatever, do you see more of those in the future? Well, it's just, you know, it's part of the staple. I mean, you, you talk about Boise State. I mean, they, they do some things a little bit different. But, but I think college football is about that about, you know, some misdirection plays. And, and you got to be able to call them at the right time. I mean, it's not like it's not like your game plan, but there's a spot in the game where you feel like maybe this will work. And it all has to do with how you set up things when it comes to trick plays, right? I mean, you, you got to set them up. And uh, at that point in time, it was a good time for it, right? It was, it was, a, it was good. It was a good play to, to run. We got the right front. We got the right coverage. And it worked out. And so it's kind of interesting when those things happen. You know, when they don't, when they don't work, you go, why did we run that? Right? You know, why did we run that play right now? Right? That's what everybody says. Even I stand there sometimes going, really? But hey, it worked. It was fun to watch. Thank, thank you, coach. Thank you guys. Thanks, coach. All right, thank you much.